my conviction was that's not going to happen. Everybody. Welcome to Contra Talk. My name is Richard Henry, and I've got Jordan Bush here. We're here at Fight Laugh Feast Conference in Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, yep. Tennessee. I said Knoxville weird. Uh, Jordan is a former missionary to Uruguay, pastor, church planter, and now he's going to be uh, changing the world with Bitcoin, yeah. right? That's the plan. <laughs> yes. uh, so you've got, you've got a sign. You're a couple doors down. Thank God for Bitcoin, yes. uh, which I'm thankful for. So well, uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about what took you to Uruguay yep. and, and what you're doing now, what Bitcoin is. That's, I, I don't have, I yep. have an idea, but okay. I really don't have any idea. Okay. And I think most people watching yep. have zero idea as well. So just tell us a little bit about yep. yourself. You married the kids. Yep. What took you to Uruguay? Yeah, so we, um, thanks for having me for some time. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks for doing married and have four kids. Um, we ended up moving to Uruguay about seven years ago. Um, I guess almost eight years ago now. I moved there to plant a church um, okay. in one of the most atheist parts of, uh, of Latin America. Um, there's a large percentage of suicide and depression, and you know, these are all things that I dealt with when I was in college. And so I just, coming out the other side of them because of you know, my faith and because of the, you know, the body of Christ, um, just seeing that need in Uruguay, we just, we just said, we said, hey, let's go down there and, and try to help people in the same way that we've been helped. Um, so we get there, thinking that's what ministry would look like. Uh, we got there and found that things were very different because as okay. we were arriving, there were tens of thousands of Venezuelan immigrants who were pouring into Uruguay uh, because the government uh, of Venezuela had hyperinflated their currency. Um, their currency, we had people who were doctors, um, uh, accountants, uh, economists who were making six figures in, in Venezuela, yeah. who a number of years later, after moving to Uru Uruguay and, and not being able to bring any of their, you know, their money was worthless, but couldn't bring anything else with them, they couldn't pay the rent. And so just wow. the, the staggering reality of the, the power of, of, of hyperinflation, uh, that was all new to me. I hadn't studied economics really. I knew a little bit about Austrian economics via Ron Paul and you know different things sure, like that, sure. but okay. was by no means some kind of expert. But I was seeing and ministering to people who, who had you know seen and experienced this the, the real world consequences of, of that kind of thing. So yeah. Um, so yeah, so we got there and it was a couple years later, a few years later that I heard about Bitcoin and started piecing together. So Bitcoin is basically, it's, it's a currency that can't be devalued. Um, it's a currency that has a fixed supply. There's 21 million that will ever exist. Um, and again, without going into all the details why, it just, you can't add more to it. Okay. And so the reason why I saw that value proposition was, so basically Bitcoin can't be inflated, printed to oblivion in the way that, that the, either the Venezuelan Bolivar or the U.S. dollar, or all these other currencies, Euro, all the currencies, all, the world, those, yeah, yeah, okay. all the currencies of the world right now are fiat currencies, which means they're they're just it's their confidence plays in the government. Right, um, they're not based so, on anything. Not based on no. anything. Government can print them, added, add you know, infinitum, ad absurdum, and so um, yeah. So basically, Bitcoin was not that, and so that thinking about my Venezuelan brothers and sisters who we're ministering to, that was kind of the lights on moment of wait, this has real, this is really revolutionary. Yeah. Um, did more research, went down the rabbit hole. And uh, yeah, and so it just, it ended up being something that with time, I, I just kept seeing more and more applications. I was a missionary. And during the time that we were in Uruguay, our, the amount of money that we needed to raise kept going up by six, 7% every single year. Wow. And so, you know, we were in a little bit of a unique situation that we were in a, uh, you know, a city context, uh, but we ended up, we got to point, by the time we were leaving Uruguay, we were needing to raise just shy. Again, we weren't seeing all of this money, but you have things, you know, medical care, all these kind of things in a, you know, that in, a, in an overseas context, yeah. we were raising just short of a hundred thousand dollars a year. Wow. And so I'm looking at that and thinking about this, like how long is this sustainable where your, your prices are going, costs are going up so exponentially because the underlying denominator is this thing that's losing value rapidly, losing, losing buying power rapidly. Yeah. And so, so again, thinking all these things, I had all these in the back of my mind. Um, we hadn't taken a furlough in seven years <laughs> of oh, being wow. on the field. Wow. And so that was that was why we, I just was basically the point where I just said, I need a break. Our yeah. missions organization was like, hey, you I need a break. Yeah. And so we ended up coming back last November. And again, thinking about all these things, the church was in a really good place. Um, we, had, we had actually merged our church with another small church plant okay. um, with a team sent by Alistair Beggs Church uh, oh, okay. in, yeah, yeah, in sure. Cleveland. No and so, yeah. yeah, just some, yeah, the church is in a great place. So we yeah. just basically said, hey, they don't strictly need us. 
Um, we definitely would love to go back on, on one level, but there's just other factors at play. Yeah. And so as I was back, I wanted to start looking for a job where I could do some sort of tent making ministry, where if we, even if we did go back immediately to the field, that would be less support that we needed to raise right. to try sure, to stem sure, off sure. ahead of time these, these pressures that we're, we're facing. So I started praying, started seeking out. Um, again, one other detail that I forgot was that I had contributed to a book while I was in Uruguay. Again, contributed. I was one of eight co-authors of a book called "Thank God for Bitcoin." Okay. That basically was like a, it's like a, a Christian in Bit. It's like a Bitcoinized version of uh, Gary North's book, "Honest Money." Okay. Um, and so, whereas his his uh, you know big payoff at the end of that was we need to form a political action committee and go back to the gold standard. My conviction was that's not going to happen just because of the way that the futures market allows you to co-opt the gold market. Right. The, the nature of gold lends, to, lends itself to centralization because it's, it's physical, it's tangible and heavy and all these things. So that, that was not a good solution. That was not going to be, that wasn't going to help my Venezuelan friends, my you know, friends right. and exactly. people in Africa. Like right. That's not reasonable. Whereas Bitcoin, the places in the world that has some of the largest percentage of Bitcoin adoption, one of them is El Salvador with made it legal 10. Another one is Nigeria, wow. where Nigeria, again, people don't have, you know, banks, they don't have, and it's not widespread, you know, very widely used, people don't have ways to secure gold, but they do have cell phones. And so right. they can send yeah. Bitcoin sure. transactions via SMS messaging. Okay. And so yeah. Bitcoin, I, I just started to see this is a way more reasonable, not just for the, you know, the, the wealthy people in America and Europe, this is something that really allows the, you know, the poorest and most vulnerable people who've had their, you know, work and um, the, the, the store of value for their labor be valued and dishonored in a way that, you know, you can't even really put a price on. I mean, it's yeah. it'd be staggering, even just in dollar terms, if you tried to calculate that. But even again, if you think about humans being made in the in the glory and image of God, you know, like, what, how do you calculate the the value of dishonoring somebody in you know who's made in God's image? And so that again, these are things that were just again coursing through my mind and, and so we ended up writing this book the book my favorite my favorite little anecdote again i have catholic <laughs> friends i have catholic friends that i still it came out the same week as a book by the pope and we were out selling a book by the pope and we we're like take that pope. <laughs> the, we're reading the pope yeah exactly vex the pope just like just like martin luther get married vex exactly, the pope. Yeah. write a book vex the pope that's yeah. good i love it exactly so yeah yeah so basically i mean that there's just a, a lot of things where i mean another thing that i just think about is and this is not native to me, was you think about you know, Bitcoin represents this radical decentralizing innovation yeah. that, that decentralized the trust in a, in a, in a uh, centralized authority. And so the, in that way, it's a very similar innovation to the idea of the printing press. Okay. Where the printing yeah. press was this radical decentralizing you know, innovation that God used to end the tyranny in the you know, religious tyranny, spiritual tyranny that the, the Catholic Church had over yeah. truth over the scriptures and so in a, in a similar way obviously obviously no not the same thing but in a similar way bitcoin is decentralizing money right uh, and so, well and yeah. it sounds like the lord is blessing it to a degree yeah. maybe not man and maybe he will i mean yeah. 500 years ago six 550 years ago right around gutenberg and everything else yeah. there's no way he would have thought like hey here's a here's a sheet and we're printing this 100%. And computer and 100%. you just print it right next to you at your 100%. desk at home yep and so sometimes it takes things take time and 100 years from now yep. who knows what bitcoin will do or a different you know dogecoin yeah. and all these other coins yeah, uh, yeah you never know yeah it's, it's and, and so and so this is where so again so our, our company we so five of the authors of the book you know, most of them I'm, i was the only missionary <laughs> i'm kind of the guy looking around like what how did i get here uh, a lot of these other guys have been in bitcoin since some of them 2011 2012 so okay. buying when bitcoin was wow I mean, you're talking under $100 a coin, and now we're at like 20,000, and went as high as 69,000 a few months ago. Um, and so these guys, are Christians, believers, and they they see the the urgency and they see the the consequences of of unsound money, yeah. and they decided to fund this company um, as a labor of love to basically help the church understand. Just un both under you can reject it if you understand it and reject it. That's one thing, but just to at least understand what it is and why it matters. Um, both philosophically and, you know, practically, just the right. way that it's used. So. No, that's good. So, so you said there's only 21 million yep. coins yep. around the world. So yep. why why can't that change? Though? Yeah. So basically, like somebody can't hack it. Like, yes. I think so, a lot of people think like it's just digital. Like, what's yeah. the big deal? And digital things can be hacked. Yeah. Right. And that's exactly. total, it. Totally makes sense. The the models that people have make sense. 
So the, the, the innovation that this person, shadowy figure, we don't know who it was, named Satoshi Nakamoto. This is their, okay. this happened, you know, he was the creator of Bitcoin. Okay, wow. The, the stated goal of creating it happened in 2000, uh, 2009. Okay, this is crazy. So in 2009, he published the, white, the Bitcoin white paper, basically the, the Bitcoin Declaration of Independence uh -huh. was published on October 31st. <laughs> Which is the day that nice. Luther nailed the 95 Theses. Halloween. So again, I mean, following, yeah, no, following yeah. the same you know, idea yeah. of like That's monetary funny. reformation, the Bitcoin protocol went live. Okay, the first Bitcoin is mined on January 3rd. Which also coincidentally is the day that Martin Luther was excommunicated from the Catholic Church. Now, oh wow! I don't know if that's if that was intentional. For me, that's crazy. That, that the coincidence that's is crazy. Be but I know. I mean, I don't and so know. then, yeah. the first Bitcoin block, uh, from which you know, the first Bitcoin remind was called the Genesis block. Okay. The Genesis yeah. isn't strictly a scriptural right. word, but yeah, again, this is just one more. Sure. Yeah, so, yeah. so basically, what this is is, like anyone who wants to can download a copy of the Bitcoin uh, ledger. Which is the Bitcoin list of trans every transaction that's ever taken place in, in Bitcoin. Wow. So you can download it, and it's made small enough. The, the block size is small enough where you can download it if you have like 400 megabyte or 400 gigabyte hard drive. Yeah. You can download the entire the entire ledger, and you can wow. verify for yourself these transactions are taking place. Yeah. So there are so you can think about it like copies of the scriptures. So like if someone were to say, hey, the scriptures, you know, uh, the scriptures say that. Uh, women pastors are, you know, this is what they, we've been doing for 2,000 years. Right. You know, we can hold up our Bibles that were printed before this person said these words and verify, no, this this is not the That's case. not true. That's not That's true. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so, okay. so in a similar way, all these copies of the blockchain that are distributed, you know, it's freely chosen by, by people to, to do this, to yeah. freely participate all over the world are there to testify to the, the, the truthfulness of, of, the, of the, the ledger of Bitcoin transactions. And so what you would have to do is you literally have to go around the world. You have to coordinate all of the governments around the world to go around and go door to door and, and, and chase down every single copy of this ledger. Wow. And, and then convince them to adopt a, a software change that is the one that they, as a all these you know joined unit together, all these yeah. nations put together, put aside all the other concerns that they have and set themselves to this goal. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Okay. Yeah, I mean, well, see, yeah. having all these manuscripts and, and parchments and yes. all these different things where we yes. have multiplicity, yep. hundreds, thousands of fragments and copies and 100%. books yep. from, from, you know, hundreds, of thousands, you know, hundreds yeah. and thousands of years ago is, yeah, yeah it's, it's, so it's a very similar yeah. thing. So you'd have to, it would require a, it would require a, co an international cooperation hitherto unseen in, you know, human Yeah, history. no, wow. Okay, so that's good. So, and so, so this then, is, all, sorry, this is what no, differentiates yeah. it from something like a Dogecoin or an Ethereum <laughs> Where oh, these are these are centralized. Again, they have a, a small group of founders um, who can who can make protocol level uh, changes in decision making. So gotcha. theoretically, if a government wanted to wanted to change something about Ethereum, if literally you go and kidnap Vitalik Buterin, who's the founder, I mean that guy has so much sway in this. The, the whole network is so reliant on him that you can make massive scale changes. Yeah. Via, you know, coordinating two or three people. You're saying not not Bitcoin? Would you say? Dogecoin? Sorry, yeah, Ethereum. 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 Or, oh, yeah, okay. Dogecoin. Oh, I don't know that one. I've heard Basically, of Dogecoin. Okay. And, you know, yeah, there's so, 50 other coins. Exactly. Yeah, you know, there's thousands actually. There was like, I point. feel like there was like a COVID coin or something. Yeah, 100. Like, like, yeah, it's so goofy but, stuff. For, exactly. For a lot of people, this is it's just a, it's just a game or it's just like a yeah yeah. You know, it's a novelty item, whereas Bitcoin was was created to be like this defensive you know way to protect people's buying okay. power against, wow. against wow, the wow, state wow. so okay so yeah no that's really cool so what took you is rewind a little bit and we'll yep. probably wrap up with sure. bitcoin more but um what took you guys to uruguay i mean if you feel as much share as much as you want yeah. uh i know did you who were you with with uh Mission board. Mission. Yep, we were with Avant Avant Ministries. Avant. Okay. Uh, they I don't used know to be that. called okay. Gospel Missionary Union. The way that okay. most people know them. Um, so Jim Elliott. Yeah, yeah. One of the guys who died in the jungle with with Jim Elliott was Roger Udarian, and Roger Udarian was with Gospel Missionary oh, Union. Oh, uh huh. Okay. And then the man who found their bodies, uh, his name was Frank Drown, and he was also with Gospel Missionary Union. Wow. So yeah, wow, so wow, wow. Avant. I mean, okay. they basically plant churches around the world. Specifically, they specifically target cities. Um, where there's a very small presence of the church, and yeah. go there and do that. So that, yeah, that was our goal: was to go there and plant a church. And okay. Then doing that, you know, we we did that, and are still, excuse me, still very much interested in, in the future, 
in the possibility of doing that and doing yeah. that again someplace else. But just in this season of our lives, kind of this is this is where we're at. Yeah. And so yeah, so just I mean, so we founded this business. Some of the the, the other authors of this book helped found this company called Thank God for Bitcoin for TGFB Media, and the, the, basically the company exists to help educate Christians as far as what Bitcoin is and how it works. And so we do that via you know um, podcasts, via videos, uh, educational resources, books. Uh, eventually short films, things along those lines, okay. just things on YouTube. I mean, just making videos to help people answer a lot of the very, very reasonable questions that they have yeah. about Bitcoin, its you know, uh, economic impact, its energy usage, just all, all kinds of questions. Yeah. Our goal is to kind of help be the go-to source to help Christians understand all these things. Yeah, so since there's nobody asking questions because we're just recording, yeah. it's yeah. not live. <laughs> what are some top questions, because there's people going to be watching this, and yep. like, okay, yeah, but where do I go. do it? How yep. do I do this? And yep. can I like, have my company use this to invest. You mentioned earlier yeah. in our conversation, a church should have 4% you know, of their budget or whatever, I forget how you say it, yeah. treasury. Treasury, so. yeah. And then go buy Bitcoin and four years later, it's gonna be much different. Yeah. What are the top like two or three questions people have? Yeah, I mean, it, it, some of it is, some of it's like seasonal, some of it's, so like right now, one of the things that has been talked a lot about by by the news, which Christians would not, Christians don't go to TV preachers to learn about about Jesus. This is not a reliable source. And so, but curiously people, (laughs) curiously people are, have much more trust and confidence when people talk about money on on TV. Yeah. And when you, again, when you go down the road, you realize there's a very good reason to doubt a lot of what's being said there as well. (laughs) But, um, so what are some, a lot of the questions? One of the, one of the questions that's recently come up a lot is relating to Bitcoin's energy usage. Okay. So Bitcoin uses more energy than the country of Argentina or something like that. And so, energy usage. So the, the Bitcoin miners, the amount of money, so the way that Bitcoin works is there's the Bitcoin protocol uh-huh. and these miners, in order to mine Bitcoin, which means, so think of like, if you think of Bitcoin like gold that's stored within rocks, uh-huh. in order to free that, that, that gold, you have to expend energy to buy machines that break up rock, that clean it and whatever. And so right, that right, involves right. obviously the capital investiture, uh, you know, to buy the machines. You have to have electric, you know, power, uh, energy sources to, to power them, to buy oil, you know, yeah. fuel, whatever. And then obviously you're paying people to process them, to do all this kind of thing. So that's, that, so the energy footprint of the gold industry is huge. It's way bigger than Bitcoin. Right, 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 okay. But people are concerned about, you know, Bitcoin's energy usage. So the question is, this is this, it's sn- smuggles in, this presuppositional smuggling. You know, it smuggles in this presupposition, Bitcoin is worthless. This is, it's using a whole lot of energy, and so we should get rid of it. It's like right. circular reasoning, you know, one on one. So the question that you need to ask yourself is, as a Christian who takes, you know, thinking seriously, as we go to first principles, what is an, what is an accessible, an, an um, acceptable use of energy? Yeah. And so, the, the way you think about, okay, right now, what is securing the world's economic system? It's not, it's not backed by gold or anything. It's secured by militaries, <laughs> guys with guns, um, nuclear weapons, the threat of all these things. It's the yeah. threat of threat of war, threat of sure. violence. Um, and then obviously you have like the physical presence of ships and all these kind of things. And so Bitcoin provides all of those same defenses, but without any of the, you know, without any of the, the threats of violence. It uses the same cryptography that's protecting the nuclear codes yeah. to protect your, your buying power. And so, so again, so the question is, what is an acceptable use of energy? In my mind, if you can, if you can provide the security of banks, provide the security of the monetary supply that governments and banks have provided at this point without needing the, the threat of war, the threat of right, being right. able to just charge in and destroy Killing the people. lives yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of not just you know random Destroying people, countries. but Christians yeah. all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Disrupting, potentially, and this does happen, disrupting the work of missionaries all over the world, disrupting church life and all these things. Um, if you have the ability to do that, well then why, why as a Christian would you not do that? Right. Um, and so, so again, so in my mind, if you can, if you can do that, then in, in that case, Bitcoin's an incredibly valid and I mean, so it's a de- very desirable use of energy. Um, so that's that's one what, thing. And, and somebody yeah. th- somebody thinking this because I'm thinking this yeah. probably. What? Uh, where is Bitcoin then? Yeah. Like you say, you're mining it. <laughs> I've seen these things and oh, this you know that they broke up this house that was just a bunch of computers yep. and they were mining yep. Bitcoin and people yep. are like. I don't, what does that mean? Like, yeah. I can see rocks and I can see there's little glittery yes. stuff. So let's dig it out. Let's pan for gold in the rivers. Let's, you know, yeah. all this. Yep. Where is the Bitcoin? Is it like hidden? Yeah. And like, and so again, so I have the snarky answer, and then I have the, the like again. The, <laughs> you can this, give both. The, okay, yeah, it's fine. I give you both. I so get, the yeah. snarky answer is, where are your money? That where is your money that you use? Okay. 
Yeah. The money that you like, it's, we already have digital, digital currency. The, we already yeah, have digital yeah. currency. Okay, Almost uh-huh. nobody uses like the vast majority of money, the highest, per, the vast majority of money yeah, in got, the world is being used is, is being used digitally. No, exactly. No, Zero no, cash. no bills in here. I do. <laughs> it's right here, though. So, there so we're already using we're already using digital currency. Yeah. The other thing is, most banks hardly hold any physical currency in it. So if you want to go down to a bank, there's been people who've gone down to the bank. I need to get out twenty thousand dollars to go buy fifty thousand dollars to buy a house. Right. They're like we don't have that right now. Wow. So or yeah, you don't want banks do anymore. Right you, you just, it's not yeah, a hundred percent. And so wow. So you're already we're already using digital currency. It's already it's already ubiquitous, and Bitcoin just represents you know um, decentralized you know digital currency. Okay. So where so now if we're gonna take it seriously, like where is it? Basically, again, this is. It's a little bit tricky to understand. So the way to understand it is just the regular banking system. Okay. So what actually happens? What in, what the the service that a bank actually performs and that the the Federal Reserve performs is they have a ledger, effectively think an Excel spreadsheet, where they're just tracking movements of money. It's it's all digital. Okay. They're trans. Okay, this person moved X amount of money to this person's account, and so that's all that is all it is is a ledger. Okay. In large part, there obviously are physical instruments. But so what Bitcoin is, the Bitcoin ledger is, is it's a decentralized ledger that keeps track of all these movements. And so what you're what is actually being moved are um, like you, you have your, your own key. It's basically the, the rights to a space on the blockchain. Okay. Interesting. So to get a point to so of that twenty one million, yes. you get a little slice in yes. there. Out of, okay. So you I own like property, the, sort of. Yes, it's okay. it's like okay. digital property. Okay. And so okay. digital okay. property rights is a great way to put it. So what you actually like what you actually possess is I get I get the rights to a spot on this blockchain that only I have control over. And so the way that you control them is it's like a either a twelve or a twenty four word passphrase. Okay. okay. And that gives me and only me unless I could want to share that with other people, it gives me the right and the ability to move access to that amount of space on the on the blockchain. Gotcha. And so, which sounds crazy, eph- ephemeral, whatever, but it's really very similar to the, the everyday reality of money in, in you know the current system that we are we're already used to and you know accustomed to using. Gotcha. Don't think twice about using. Yeah. Um, and and again, Bitcoin. I think the other thing is just the question that people have is I mean about it's difficult to understand. And that is very true relative yeah. to where we are right now. There's a wonderful clip from the Today Show uh, in like 1994 of, I think it's Bryant Gumbel and a few other ladies who are forgotten to history talking about the concept of email. And they're like, what is email? Like, why do, what about letters? Like, why do we need email? Yeah. And it is just, wow. it's hilarious to look at it now. And, and all like, the things that they were saying were totally yeah. true. Yeah, uh, yeah. Email was really complicated. Like, what in the world? And, and then it became ubiquitous. And yeah. so in our case, wow. like Bitcoin, I mean, 13 years ago it didn't exist, and now it's literally currency in a nation. And one of the yeah. poorest nations of the world, they're using it just fine. Which one was so that again? El Salvador. El Salvador, yeah. okay. Wow. So again, it's just like any- That's it, their main it, currency. It, so they have a shared, they, have, they use the US dollar, okay. and they use um, uh, Bitcoin. It's okay. native currency, you can go to Starbucks and use Bitcoin. You can do- and I mean, and ultimately, I think a lot of people don't realize this, because most people are just like economics, ah, you yep. know, kind of hate go sideways. But it's like, we could just, I mean, I could say right here, this is worth $100. Yeah. And if somebody else accepts this as $100 yep. and they get a book and a this, yep. and there's a guy across the way with yep. paintings, and I give that him, and now he can take that and go somewhere else. All it is is we're just, yep. it's its this middle road yep. for services. Yes. As opposed to being like, okay, you give me fried chicken and mashed potatoes yep. and greens, I'll wash dishes for 20 minutes yes. or a half an hour. Yes. You know, and, I, and so, and so well, this I'll is, just give you some money. It makes it easier. 100%. And so this is the heart of what money is. Money is designed to be this intermediary, yeah. right. a trusted media intermediary between people to help them provide value for them, to help them transport the value of their labor across time and space. Okay. And this is this is why money exists. And there can be good, there can be good money and there can be bad money. Right. Um, and yeah, I, I just think that that's, that's one of the things, part of the issue Part of so the the movement with our with as far as our educational goals is to demonstrate that Bitcoin is sound money, Demonst- or sorry, demonstrate that sound money matters to Christians. Yeah, and so guys like Gary North and other people have done have done work on that, but we they're not they still haven't reached anywhere a broad level of adoption to where it needs to, things yeah. need to be. But there's very good reasons for Christians to care about sound money, and so then our goal our our uphill battle is basically to demonstrate that Bitcoin is sound money. Yeah. And so, um, 
but yeah, so that again, it's it's tough on a lot of levels, but people ask really good questions, and so you're just helping people sort through. I mean, yeah. in a, in a lot of in a lot of ways, again, it's just you have things questions about Christianity that I have with atheists and you know or people from other faiths right. or whatever they have all kinds of really good questions or mis you know misconceptions based on interactions that they've had with people and so you patiently reasonably you know talk to them and, yep. and try to it's, it's yep. very similar it's just any kind of education is all that no, that's good um, well uh, you know anything else you want to add um I'm trying to think if I mean our, our website is tgfb.com okay yeah I was gonna ask you yep. okay tgfb.com uh, TGFB is in thank God for Bitcoin.com. Okay, good. And then we have we're we're shortly publishing. Actually, we do have a YouTube channel, Thank God for Bitcoin on YouTube. Okay, uh, right but on. then yeah, we're starting getting ready to found, uh, start a podcast and TikTok for for the young. Again, we're like trying to love our our younger Christian you know neighbors and help yeah. them as well. Um, so yeah, I mean we're we're going to be out there. And then the primary events that we do uh, at this point, we have a conference. Uh, it's a standalone Thank God for Bitcoin conference, piggybacking off of the larger Pacific Bitcoin conference in Los Angeles okay. uh, next month. Um, so that'll be uh, our event will be November 9th. Uh, there's, we'll have more details on, on TGFB.com. And then the bigger event is the the largest Bitcoin conference in the world is will be in Miami next May. Okay. There were 35,000 people uh, in wow. Miami this past year, and it's probably going to be. 40, 50,000, you know, this year. Wow. And so we do a larger event, standalone event, the day before that. Okay. Um, and so we'll probably have at least 500 people who are there who are Christian Bitcoiners. Yeah, no, that's We're, great. There's, I mean, I know an Anglican priest who's a who's a Bitcoiner. I know three PCA pastors who are Bitcoin. Wow. Like you would not believe within the reform world the the number of Bitcoin, you know, number of leaders who are into Bitcoin and then just the number of, of parishioners themselves. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so thank you no, for your time. Cool. Really yeah, appreciate, I appreciate you know, it, brother. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. All right, everybody. Well, go check the, the, his website out. And uh, what, where's the best place to buy Bitcoin, by the way? You have yep. points there? Yeah. So, okay. so yeah. So, I mean, again, there's a lot. There's limitless places. But the, one of the places that I would recommend, I would recommend buying Bitcoin from a, a place that only sells Bitcoin. Okay. Because what happens is the, the incentive structure and the, the other exchanges that sell all kinds of coins, mm -hmm. they get paid by the transactions. So they take like one and a half percent or two percent yeah, of yeah. every transaction. So the more transactions that they have, the more money. They make. Okay. So they're not necessarily incentivized to to sell you what is the thing, what's the best money. They're incentivized in a lot of cases to to just pump their own bags. Gotcha. And so there's a few a few places that only sell Bitcoin. One of them is called Swan Bitcoin. Swan. Um, okay. Really fun, weird name, but there there's a, a ton of believers that work for that company. Okay. Um, they only do Bitcoin, and they do a great job of helping educate people how to use Bitcoin. They have free resources that they offer, and then they will be the first ones to tell you, don't store your Bitcoin with us. Learn how to, over okay. time, in the short term it's fine, but over time they'll help educate you to be able to take custody of your own Bitcoin yourself. Okay. Um, that so very good. much, yeah. it's very much a, the, the, the Bitcoin movement is very much, it's very much aligned with like the, the self-sovereign movement and the movement towards sovereignty and the movement towards, you know, being accountable for your life. And being yeah, personal responsibility. Personal responsibility, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate it, brother. Yep. Yeah. Everybody go check that out if you're more interested. Uh, yeah. Buy Bitcoin. Swan.com. That's a great place yep. to go. And check out the website as well. So, all right, y'all. Take, Take care. care. Thank y'all.